This is the second program of ICS for Industry, and it is called the Response Organization. In this program, we'll see how incident command is established and transferred, when unified command is used, and how an incident command post functions. We'll also look at the responsibilities of the incident commander, the structure of the ICS organization, the duties of the command and the general staff, and the basic strategies used to deal with an incident. Come back to the city board. Go ahead. We have a fire in one of the units. The incident command system fixes responsibility for managing the incident on one individual, regardless of the arrival sequence of personnel. It is important that command be established right from the start of the emergency response. The first responder on the scene, regardless of rank or function, should assume command and control of on-scene operations until relieved by a senior official or until the emergency is terminated. Command is transferred to a more senior or qualified individual only if the transfer will improve the quality of incident command and then only to an individual who is already on scene. Initial priorities include isolating the area, determining the nature of the emergency, and starting the proper notifications. This should occur no matter how small the incident. Many incidents have gone out of control because someone thought they could handle it without instituting the emergency management system. Transfer of command is an easy place to fumble the ball. <laughs> 